What's going on guys? My name is Jason and this is Blue Water Life. Today we're going to talk about some of my favorite, favorite fishing down here in South Florida and that is mahi fishing. We all know that this is probably the most sought after fun and exciting fish that you can catch down here in South Florida uh, and definitely one of my favorites. So what I want to do today is talk about and share all of the tips, techniques, things that I've learned along the way that have helped me to become a better mahi fisherman. So let's jump right into it. Today we're going to focus on a few different things that have helped me become a better fisherman. One is how to find the fish. The second is what is my setup like? What do I have? What do I need to be prepared with? Uh, and then what type of tackle do I have, live bait, chunk, you know, plastic, what am I using, uh, artificials out there to be able to catch these fish. So let's jump right into it uh, and talk about how to find the fish. All right, to find these fish, uh, we're gonna travel offshore. So I am over here in Miami. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is come out of the Hollover Inlet, uh, which is north of me a few miles uh, to get myself offshore. The other thing that I, I can do is travel south and go through Miami uh, or out by Key Biscayne. But my goal is really to run out to that 800 to 1,000 foot range. Uh, but really once I hit that reef's edge where you see the separation from the two different colors is right around that 100, 120 foot range. I'm really starting to key in, look for birds, look for signs of life and all different things. Uh, I have found them in shallow water, 30 or 40 feet, but typically a lot deeper. So when I do come out of the inlet, my goal is to run south into that 800 to 1,000 feet. Uh, the Gulf Stream is going at anywhere between three to five knots at a north current uh, or a south current coming from the south. So I push myself down south against the current so that as I'm coming back home it's a little bit easier to get myself back but you know anywhere as soon as I hit that hundred plus feet I'm looking for weed lines I'm looking for the birds I'm looking for pallets I'm looking for flying fish I'm looking for really any sign of life out there we mentioned running and gunning one of my favorite techniques and one of the techniques you can use to help uh, catch these fish you're gonna burn a lot more gas doing it but um, it's probably a lot more effective than just blind trolling or picking your first weed line and throwing lines down. So running and gunning is getting out there and trying to look for signs of life. And that those signs of life may be uh, a weed line uh, with fish on it. Typically, I just won't troll a weed line that is dead weed or there's no activity under it. I run to that weed line. The first thing that I'm looking for is some sort of life under it. Are there fish? Are there birds? What is What kind of action is, is going on on that weed line? The second, when I'm out there, I'm looking for, like I said, some, so, some sign of life. So are there flying fish? That's a huge indicator that they're probably mahi in the area, uh, especially if you have flying fish around weed lines, you're probably gonna run into mahi there. Uh, the next thing that I'm looking for are always birds. Birds, and especially frigates, are some of the number one indicators that you have mahi there or in the area. A few different situations that I've ran through with birds that kind of mean different things. When you find a frigate and the frigate's flying 10, 15 feet off the water, it, it probably means and most of the time means that it's working with a mahi. So a mahi is under there pushing the bait up and that frigate is working, looking for food. Uh, so that's a good indicator of mahi. If the frigate's flying 100 plus feet in the air, you know, and it looks like it's just cruising, if you're following it, you're probably going on for a ride because that thing is looking, uh, it is not hunting. So that's probably not the best indicator. The next one is when you find two or three of the smaller birds working an area, that means that there's mahi under there. Mahi push the bait fish up whenever they're feeding. So when the bait fish come up, the birds are gonna eat right off the top of the water. Right. In the last situation, you may run into a, uh, a school of 20, 30 birds all working in area, moving quickly. That's usually not mahi, that's tuna. So just to know that if you see that, you're probably gonna go after tuna. Uh, so throw the lures a little bit farther back. 
uh, and troll right past them. But if not, the other two situations are really your best bet for Mahi. And when you run into these situations, you always want to look for two of them together. So what I like to think of is, hey, what I like to think of is if I can find a weed line with birds working, great indicator that there's gonna be mahi there. If I find a uh, frigate and flying fish, there's probably mahi in the area. So if you can find two forms of life or two things that would hold life in one area, that's a good area to pick to start trolling your lines. All right guys, so let's talk about our rod setups uh, and how we prepare ourselves when we get out there. So this is my go-to mahi rod. Um, so this is a, a seven foot uh, spinning rod uh, from Esky Rods uh, in Key West. Great rods. Um, these things are uh, a carbon fiber, um, but any sort of rod works. You don't need to have something custom. I have caught a lot uh, on rods from Bass Pro Shops, um, pen, spin fit, spin, pen products. Um, really any type of rod is gonna work for you. Um, but what you want here is a good real uh, 6500. Um, you can use, I, I like to go with the pen uh, slammer 6500s. I had a bunch of spin fishers as well, 6500s. But anywhere between that five to 6,000 6, size reel, is really gonna be good for most of the mahi fishing that you're gonna do down here in South Florida. So these reels, I mean, I use them for, uh, you know, troll, I'll, I'll troll feathers with them. Um, I'm gonna use them for pitch baits. I'm gonna use them for a whole bunch of different things, especially when it comes from mahi fishing. But the key here is to have a good, uh, good spinning reel and rod, um, seven foot, something with, and I like to fill it with 30 pounds. So this is 30 pound uh, diamond braid. I have that down there in the description as well. Uh, and then what I'll do is run this thing to a, uh, a leader, probably about four to five foot leader. Uh, and that leader is going to be tied. And I like to tie, uh, this is an FG knot. Uh, so I'll teach you guys how to do that later. But I like to tie the FG knot just because it keeps it clean. Well, now that we've gotten your rod, what should we be prepared with on our boat to make sure we're catching as many mahi as possible? So um, number one is I always will have a few rods with this J hooked. This is great for pitch baits, uh, whether you're using ballyhoo chunks, um, you know, if you're gonna throw pilchards on here, but I like that. I like this instead of a circle hook because a circle hook, you know, when that mahi swallows that thing, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get it out. When the mahi swallows this, I believe this is a five or a six uh, J hook here, a long shank. Um, but when the mahi swallows, this is much easier to pull it out. Like I said, those things, um, the mahi are, are very aggressive. And so having a hook like that, even if it's a little bit bigger in your bait, uh, is not gonna kill your chances of catching a mahi. You always wanna have a few of these rods. What I, what I found, um, is that I'll, I'll get out there, I'll get on a school mahi. One of my hooks will get caught. I'll have to leave it in the mahi's mouth. Then I gotta re-rig. By the time I'm re-rigging, the school may be moving on uh, and I've lost my chance. So invest in a couple rods, make sure you have a couple of these on your boat and you're prepared and ready to go. The next thing I always like to have is some sort of lure or bucktail jig. Um, I'll run this bucktail jig. This is a little bit of a heavier weight so I can cast this out, but if I'm running and gunning, uh, I'll throw this thing next to weed patches. I'll throw this thing out there uh, to see if any mahi chase it. I wanna try to create emotion. So some people use poppers. Um, you can even tie up and rig up a ballyhoo here and use that, but you want some sort of uh, lure that you're gonna be able to throw out. Um, and I prefer just the J hook on here than a treble hook because once the mahi gets a treble hook, good luck getting the thing out. You're gonna break the treble hook or uh, break your lure, but you know, use this. Most of the time, this is just like I said, to get the mahi out from under the weed lines or the patches or wherever you're at, get them chasing bait, and then you can throw your live bait at them. All right, and then the one go-to I always really have rigged up um, on my mahi trips, I want some sort of skirt, uh, something that's easy, something that you know attracts mahi. Uh, this has been my go-to uh, 
forever. Uh, honestly, I have all these lures that are super expensive and these little purple skirts have caught me more fish than anything else that I have. Um, you think it's crazy, you spend $60 on a lure, it doesn't catch you nothing, uh, anything, doesn't catch you anything, and then you spend a dollar on something like this uh, and you're catching fish. So um, the smaller the better, I usually use a four, uh, a four inch somewhere in there. Purples, blues are usually my favorite go-to. Sometimes people like pink, um, but this thing is rigged up uh, on the end of the same spinner that I was using for pitch baits um, and all of that when I'm out there. Just really, really easy. Uh, how do I use this? This rig is solely used for running these weed lines. I'm looking for fish or I'm in a place where I have two different sides of life. Maybe it's a weed line and a lot of flying fish. I'm gonna run the weed line with those skirts to try to pick off the mahi. Um, once I pick off the mahi, then I'll probably switch to a chunk bait or a live bait, but this is my go-to um, for finding those fish. I usually run two different rods behind me uh, and run those weed lines until I get one on. Um, then I'll transition over and jump into live bait. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about today is what am I using to catch these fish? So we went over uh, some of the lures, the bucktail jig. We went over that uh, plastic squid skirt. Um, you can use Islanders, whatever type of squid skirt that you want. But the best way to get catch mahi, especially when you get on a school, is to have live bait, right? Some people will use um, a chunk bait, they'll chunk ballyhoo, uh, throwing ballyhoo out there. Um, that will catch them, but you're gonna catch way more fish if you have some sort of pilchard uh, or live bait, something of a smaller size that they're gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to toss out there, get them fired up, keep them around the boat, uh, and that's the way you're gonna be able to load up and fill up your boat with fish. So make sure, and I know if, if you don't wanna catch live bait, there's a bunch of guys out there in the inlet, uh, right before the inlets that will sell you live bait, sell you pilchards, uh, but if not, invest the time into cast netting pilchards, especially before you go out. Having a couple hundred uh, out there could be the difference of pulling back 20 plus fish uh, for the day, filling your boat, um, taking taking limit, or it may be the difference of coming back with nothing. I've done both. I've ran out there with nothing in the boat, no pilchards, caught everything on you know those uh, the bucktail jigs, different lures from trolling, and it's definitely not as much fun as when a boat filled with live bait. Once you catch that bait and you get that stuff in the water, you're gonna see the difference. The fish are on you, they're gonna stay on you, and it's gonna be a lot more of a fun experience. Thanks guys um, for watching this. I hope that some of the things that I, I brought up on here will help you uh, on your next mahi fishing trip or adventure. Please guys, make sure to help out the channel, subscribe, like, comment uh, in the box below and be able to answer or help you out with any other videos that you're looking for. But um, I'm learning that I'm learning to do this the same way that you are. So let's learn together. Let's have some fun and let's get fishing.